So today I wanted to kind of do a pin trading basics video and talk about something I haven't really talked about much on my channel before, and that is Disney fantasy pins. I say this is kind of a pin trading basics video because fantasy pins are not actually Disney pins. Fantasy pins are fan-made pins that have no association with Disney themselves. So they are not technically real Disney pins, but they, especially now, are a pretty large part of the Disney pin trading community and collecting hobby as a whole. So like I said how a fantasy pin is a fan-made pin, that just means any old person out there goes and makes their own pin, and it's somehow inspired by Disney. You can pretty much find or create whatever kind of fantasy pin you want. So the possibilities are really endless and that's why I think a number of people like to collect fantasy pins because you can find and create designs that you don't see in normal Disney pins. Or perhaps create pins for collections that there aren't many authentic Disney pins for. But just like official Disney pins, fantasy pins can run the range from costing a few dollars or around the price that you would get pins for in the parks up to in the hundreds of dollars for super high-end, super sought-after fantasy pins. Now, the fantasy pin community is its own huge, kind of complicated, often at times secretive community. So it actually took me quite a long time before I got my first fantasy pin, but they still seem to be gaining in popularity. And you can also see how as Disney's official pins, they've really been decreasing in quality lately, but prices have been increasing. So people can turn to fantasy pins for some higher quality designs and production. So I split fantasy pins into two general categories ones that are created by small shops and others that are by creators. So I think people are generally familiar with the Disney small shop community at large, and there's quite a number of small shops that either specialize in pins or have a large majority of their items in pins, and these pins are often more so broadly Disney inspired. Sometimes they will use imagery of Disney characters, but a lot of times it's things that are inspired by Disney icons. These small shop pins can range from some lower limited editions, and other times they can also be kind of open edition pins where a shop will continue to restock the same design. But typically with well-established small shops, you're probably looking at pin designs that are around an LE100 or an LE200. So a lot of these small shops definitely have a pretty big presence on Instagram where you can find them. And then they'll also typically have their own stores and websites online where you can purchase pins. Sometimes you might be purchasing a pin pre-sale when you buy from a small shop but a lot of times they also have their pins in hand that they sell. And these pins are generally cheaper and they're kind of on the range of the open edition pins that the Disney park sells. I've really been starting to enjoy some of the small shop fantasy pins. People come out with really awesome designs, they're still really affordable, and also you're probably gonna be getting some higher quality product than what kind of has been coming from Disney lately given their a little bit lack of regard for quality control. So my favorite small shop that makes pins is Enchanted Thoughts Club. I have a number of pins from them here. I figured I would show all the fantasy pins that I have in this video since I don't have too many. I really like Enchanted Thoughts Club because I really like the design of their pins and they're also a really nice quality, plus they also throw in a free button with your order. This is my latest pin from them that I just got in the mail. This says, the mountains are calling. And this features illustrations of Splash Mountain, Space Mountain, and Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. I love the mountains, especially Splash Mountain. They do a lot of pins that have the Mickey icon head to them, and so I thought this one was great to put with my attractions pins. I also have this Edna Mode pin from them. She's wearing sunglasses that are inspired by the Mickey Mouse sunglasses from the Target line, and they read, Never Look Back, Darling. I have this fun Dole Whip Tea Party pin that I showed in a previous pin mail video. I have this Stitch de la Cruz pin where he's playing la guitarra de Ernesto, or I guess actually Hector. And then I have this Un Poco Loco pin inspired by Coco. So these small shop pins are nice obviously because they often have really unique designs that are generally Disney inspired that you wouldn't see in the parks, except Disney is really kind of starting to see that people like the small shop ideas and they're kind of wanting to implement themselves officially. These pins are also not too expensive, pretty much what you would pay for an open edition in the parks. And so I realize I think Enchanted Thoughts Club is the only what I'd categorize 
as a Disney small shop that I have pins from, but I know that there are so many others out there. So I would definitely like if you have any recommendations for other good small shop pin makers. I will say I am selective when it comes to fantasy pins. I do not like soft enamel pins. So soft enamel is when the enamel is sunken in, it's not flushed to the metal lines. You'll find that a number of fake pins are made with soft enamel because soft enamel pins are cheaper to make. So I can understand that some makers will go for soft enamel because it's cheaper to produce, but I personally would be totally okay with paying a dollar or two extra to have a hard enamel pin because I way, way prefer the quality of those. So the pins from the small shops, I definitely say, are kind of ones that are more so geared toward personal collections if you want to include them or more of use as Disney flair. I don't really see these kind of pins being traded online as much as pins from creators, which is what I'll talk about next. But one thing that I haven't noted yet is you cannot trade fantasy pins in the Disney parks because obviously they do not have copyright Disney on the back because they're not produced by Disney. However, you can trade fantasy pins online. You just have to be aware of what group you're trading in, the rules that they have, but fantasy pin trading is definitely a very large portion of the pin trading and collecting hobby. So if I'm buying pins from a small shop, I'm just buying them personally for myself, but I know a lot of people who will purchase pre-sales for low limited edition exclusive fantasy pins and use those as traders, since trading for higher end fantasy pins can definitely be a big thing. So then there's my next category of creators, because I feel like small shops are much more of in the Disney inspired realm and creators can still be Disney inspired, but they'll go a little bit more all out in terms of Disney characters. And you'll find tons of fantasy pin makers on Instagram. If you just search the hashtag fantasy pin, you'll find so many people on there. I know there are also fantasy pin specific groups on Facebook, but as I've kind of started to get a little bit more into this type of fantasy pin, you find a lot on Instagram. So with these creators, their pins are almost always low limited edition pins. They'll probably typically be around an LE of 50 or lower. So these often can be quite exclusive. And then also the lower number of pins you have produced by a factory, the higher the price is per individual pin. So this is where even if you purchase a pin in pre-sale, it can still kind of have a hefty price tag. Fancy pins can also be very difficult to get depending on how popular or well-known the creator is. There are some very well-known high-end fantasy pin makers and it is very difficult to purchase their pins. Every fantasy pin maker kind of does it a different way. Some will have their own websites, will they have stores set up and then you can go shop in there. Other times they might post the pin on Instagram and you just have to comment on it sold. So with the most popular creators, you have to be super quick if you wanna snag the pins. When you're buying these pins, you're pretty much always buying into a pre-sale for the pin. So when you're having a pin made, you typically have to pay 50% upfront and then 50% after you have all the pins. So in order for a maker to put a pin into production, they'll have a pre-sale so they can get a secure number of buyers for that pin to have enough money to cover around maybe that 50% to get it into production. So those pre-sold pins will typically be sold at the lowest price you can get the pin and they'll often be at the highest quality since you're gonna be guaranteed typically always a flaw-free pin. And then the creator will usually sell more extras that they have in hand. Fantasy pin makers will pretty much always do quality control on the pins that they get. And at the end, they'll typically often up unflawed and then also flawed pins for sale. With fantasy pin makers, typically they'll offer up flawed pins at a lower price. Now, when you're buying into a pre-sale, Typically, I'd say maybe at minimum, you're gonna wait a month to get the pin since it's gonna take time for the factory to produce the pin and ship it over here, but it can also take many, many multiple months until you actually have that pin in hand. So that's why if you're purchasing into fantasy pin pre-sales, that's why it's extra, extra important to always, if you're using PayPal, to pay as goods and services. So that way you have buyer protection. And I think it's a six month period where you're guaranteed that buyer protection because if you're paying as friends and family and maybe the creator just kind of falls off or something happens with that pin, you wanna make sure that you're gonna get refunded. But as a buyer, you also don't wanna unnecessarily back out of a pin presale because then that's not fair to the creator. So the elephant in the room with these kind of fantasy pins is technically a lot of them are not really allowed or kind of illegal. 
because they infringe on Disney copyright. So Disney owns their characters, they have the copyright on that, and what people can do and what companies do is they license those Disney characters to use them on products. However, if fantasy pin makers take Disney characters or direct Disney artwork and then put them on a pin and then sell that pin, they're profiting off of Disney's copyright, which is not allowed. So creating fan art is totally fine, but then if you sell that, that's when it kind of gets a little bit of a sticky situation. It seems to be okay when there is a transformative use to the design where it is fully distinct than whatever Disney had produced. But I definitely have seen some pins produced that will directly copy existing Disney artwork. A, that's not the greatest because that's not super creative, and B, that's also not the greatest because that is really not allowed. So that is definitely a big reason why some people are super opposed to fantasy pins and don't want to collect them at all. What I've seen some creators do is they'll have you actually purchase a handmade craft and then they'll send that fantasy pin along for free. So technically you're not paying for the pin, you're paying for something else small that they made themselves. But I think this is definitely also one of the reasons why the fantasy pin community can be a little bit secretive. There's also a bit of secretiveness in the community in terms of what factories they use. It seems like once a person has found a good manufacturer, they kind of want to keep that to themselves. And there are some creators that don't want to be known at all. And with those, I still don't know how their pins even get out and distributed unless they just have a small core group of people that purchase the pins and then those people kind of sell and trade them off. But some creators decide to stay fully anonymous. Micah has come to join for this portion of the video. So I definitely started off kind of like getting my toe in the water with small shop pins, but then I decided to kind of dive into more of the creator pins and I typically go for ones that have unique designs or fit into some of my more unique collections. Basically ones that kind of fill the gap where there aren't Disney produced pins. So I'm gonna share and show some of these other fantasy pins I have. So the most recent pin I got in was this Moana Reveal Conceal pin. And this was by Wish Upon a Star Fantasy Pins. She's done a series of female Disney characters in this Reveal Conceal style. So a few years ago, Disney released what would have been just a regular Reveal Conceal mystery set, mainly with Disney princesses, other Disney heroines. And for some reason, that set was pulled almost immediately. Very, very few were sold, so those pins are super rare. But these pins kind of emulate that design. And then this one has Moana on it. So I do not have very many Moana pins, and Disney has not made a lot of Moana pins. So with this, I liked the nod to the design and then also an inclusion of the character you don't see too much. I also pretty recently got in this huge Splash Mountain pin, which I love so much. I will say you don't see too many fantasy pins that are geared to attractions. A lot more is to specific characters or movies. So I was really happy to see that this one was being made. I got this pin from Fantasy Pins by Madison. I love that this is a huge size. It has glitter details on it. So this felt like it would be a great addition to my Splash Mountain collection. The last of my fantasy pins are all Emperor's New Groove fantasy pins. So this one was actually the very first ever fantasy pin I got. I think I got it probably around a year ago now. And this is a pin that is styled after the Llama Potion from Emperor's New Groove. I love Emperor's New Groove. It's one of my main collections. And Disney has never come out with a pin that's just the Llama Potion bottle. But I really loved the design of this pin. And this pin was made by Fandom Flare. My last three pins were all part of a series by Karita Pro, and these were Emperor's New Groove Squirrel Scout series pins. So the series mainly was Disney cats in Squirrel Scout uniforms. I purchased Yzma in a presale at the beginning of this year, and orders went out to a lot of people, but I didn't get mine, and then things had to be remade, so I still don't have the Yzma for this set. But what I do have here they actually included a Nick Wilde dressed up as a little Squirrel Scout. I loved this to have in my Zootopia collection. And then they also have the squirrel himself dressed in his little Squirrel Scout hat. And then most recently they came out with a Squirrel Scout Acorn Completer pin, which has Cusco the Llama on it. So those are all the fantasy pins that I have. It definitely took me a while to kind of slowly nudge my way into getting some fantasy pins. 
I feel like it's easiest to kind of tackle regular general Disney pins and then kind of find your way more of into the fantasy pin community since there are so many makers out there and so many really cool pins. I will say I have seen fantasy pins kind of follow the trends of what's popular with authentic Disney pins. So when WDI started coming out with their profile series, I feel like I've now seen a million fantasy pin makers making their own profile-esque pins, oftentimes with characters that WDI hasn't done or twists on them. WDI was also doing character clusters. I've seen quite a few makers doing that. There's been a lot of fancy pins in kind of this dreamy, sweet, or like closed eye series. That seemed to kind of really be started. I know Disney Store Japan released a line of merchandise that was kind of these sweet, dreamy princesses. I remember specifically, I know Rapunzel was on that merchandise. And then a fantasy pin maker directly copied that artwork and made pins with that. And then that kind of cascaded in the community and there were so many other kind of closed eyes, sweet, dreamy pin series. So you can definitely kind of see trends come and go in terms of designs. Uh, but I really like the things that are unique and fit into my collection. So I'd love to know your thoughts on fantasy pins, if you collect them, if you hate them, and then also what are some of your favorite fantasy pin makers, either in terms of small shops or also kind of the more exclusive creator style ones. But thanks for watching!